ciel, signe de l'espérance. Arc-en-ciel, appel à l'unité. Arc-en-ciel, viens visiter le Rwanda. Apporte-nous le pardon et la paix. Arc-en-ciel, viens visiter le Rwanda. Apporte-nous l'amour et l'unité. Arc-en-ciel, signe de l'espérance. Arc-en-ciel, appel à l'unité. Arc-en-ciel, viens visiter le Greetings to all of you, our lovely viewers. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you, wherever you are, in whatever time zone you, are, you may be in at this moment. As you tune in live or later on when you will be watching this broadcast. Greetings to those who are in chat. 
We welcome you in this broadcast. We are back again on this channel, the highest media, you know now the name. Today, exposing the injustice committed by the current leadership in Rwanda, we are exposing the harassment President Kagame's regime has not stopped to do against Rwandans who fled its oppression and sought refuge in exile. Today, we are back with Madame Prudence, the Minister of Foreign Affairs in the government of the Republic of Rwanda in exile. Today, she will be discussing the injustice committed against her sister, Beatrice, or Beatrice Munyenyezi in the United States of America and continues to be committed against her even in Rwanda. Minister Prudence, in the last broadcast, you started telling us about the case of your sister, but time was not on our side. And we decided to talk more about that case at another time. So today we have time to talk about it. The floor is yours now. You are on mute, you are on mute, please be. I'm very sorry <laughs> with this technology. Yes, I started saying that I, I want to, uh, to greet you, uh, His Excellency, Mr. President, uh, Thomas Nahimana for giving me this opportunity again um, to share more about my sister's case. Um, but uh, before I, I go further, let me uh, also uh, greet our viewers. Our mm -hmm. viewers, I greet you. And uh, uh, once again, I say uh, Happy New Year. Uh, <laughs> we're, still, uh, we're still enjoying the, the goodness of the Lord in, in this, uh, this month of January. And um, yeah, I, I am very, very grateful to all of you. And uh, uh, as we take this, I um, mean, this time, I'm sure you, uh, uh, you will enjoy our time together. Mm -hmm. Um, so, Mr. President, before I go into, uh, uh, into the, the subject, uh, please allow me uh, again to thank uh, our maker, the maker of, uh, of heaven and earth, uh, if I may. Please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Mm -hmm. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Lord God, you are good. You are a good God. You are our Father. We praise you, we adore you, Lord God. We know that um, without you, we can't do nothing. So I want to say thank you for your mercies. We thank you for your grace. We thank you, Father God, for um, giving us this opportunity to address uh, our viewers, and especially to share more about the situation uh, regarding Rwandans. Um, Lord God, we want to say thank you. We pray that, Lord, you take absolute control. Uh, Lord God, you direct our, dire um, our, our discussions and uh, you speak through us to our viewers. So we want to, again, um, thank you for the victory you are giving us. We're calling it a victory because we are seeing it coming. Uh, we know that you have selected people to help uh, Rwanda and get rid of um, the bad leadership so that Lord God, a leadership that honors you can take absolute control in that Great Lakes region for mm -hmm. the betterment of your people. So mm -hmm. Lord, again, Holy Spirit, take absolute control. We praise you, we honor you, we give you uh, glory, we give you praise in everything, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Amen, so be it. <laughs> <laughs> <That's true. laughs> yes, indeed. Um, yeah, as I said last time, I said that Petrus Munyanyes is my um, my younger sister. Um, she's uh, actually the yeah the the last born uh, in our family. I had mentioned that I had thought that I may not go into too much details about the the past. I wanted to discuss about the current situation. But maybe for uh, uh, for a review or to give the context, um, I would say that uh, 
um, as a lot of um, uh, like a lot of Rwandans, um, Beatrice uh, Manyanyezi uh, fled the the atrocities uh, of the war in Rwanda in 1994, and she arrived in Kenya uh, in uh, in September, or yeah, about September 1994, where she she gave uh, birth to twins. And um, from there in um, uh, in Kenya, she applied as, uh, to be a, re a refugee in the U.S. through a USA agency, and then. Um, she was seeking to join my brother, uh, Jean-Marie Fianehigiro, who, uh, who sponsored her to come. And so later on, after a few years, she came with, uh, with her, her children. Um, but again, like other uh, many, many Rwandans, she was falsely accused. Um, the Rwandan officials lobbied the US and uh, Beatrice was uh, uh, faced with uh, uh, justice in the US. And, uh, uh, on the things that she uh, she never did. So in 2010, uh, she was arrested and uh, put in jail uh, here, uh, uh, being accused of participating in genocide. And uh, in 2020, uh, 2012, 2012, the um, yeah the, the case ended in in a mistrial. Mistrial is um, um, an an uh, inclusive trial such as the the one. Um, where the jury cannot uh, cannot agree on a verdict. Usually, when some when uh, when something happens like that, when a trial come, I mean, uh, ended uh, ends up in mistrial, there is no other uh, other proceedings. The person is let go. But mm -hmm. in the case of my sister, um, because again of the the lobbying and the pressure of the of the current regime in Rwanda, Beatrice was again. Um, Persecuted, and this time the U.S. federal prosecutors uh, changed their strategy, and um, they they accused her of lying while filling out uh, filling up paperwork uh, when she was applying for uh, for U.S. citizenship. So, um, and and yet, I mean, she, uh, anyway, in 2013, uh, Beatrice was convicted. Uh, based on those uh, latest first uh, charges, and she was uh, sentenced in, um, to 10 years uh, in jail, and her US citizenship was revoked. So mm -hmm. in 20, uh, 2019, um, the immigration here started the, the process of, um, of deporting her. And um, the, the, co I mean, uh, the court ended up uh, issuing um, a decision to deport her. Um, but why did the, uh, a petition to stay that deportation because there was a, um, an appeal going on? Um, Beatrice uh, was deported on April uh, 15, 2021. So mm -hmm. when she was deported, she was handed over to um, the Rwandan Investigation Bureau. <laughs> I don't know if it's an investigation or investigation, but. <laughs> <laughs> The, I think this stands by Rib. It is like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a, it, it, it investigating. Like investigation bureau. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> so she was immediately put, uh, yeah, put in jail. Uh, and now Beatrice is in prison, um, being falsely accused of uh, being uh, a university student. And she, she I mean, uh, but, but I, as I said, I, I think I said it last time that she, uh, she, I mean, she was. She did not finish high school even uh, in in Rwanda. She actually finished high school uh, here in the in the US. Um, and uh, when she was arrested uh, in 20, uh, uh, 2010, she was actually doing her uh, her college degree. But uh, in Rwanda, she was. Uh, she, I mean, she did not finish school. But in Rwanda, currently. One of the charges uh, she's being accused of, she's being accused of being a university, uh, university student leading um, uh, militias, the, the ones called in Terahamwe, and uh, they uh, accuse her um, of committing acts of genocide, um, false accusations, uh, that's uh, saying that she, that she was organizing meetings of uh, Emirate the political party, and yet she—I mean, she never participated in uh, uh, in the politics. Mm -hmm. 
So now going back to the current uh, situation. Mm -hmm. The current situation, the issue uh, that is pressing is the, uh, the security of her children that are uh, here in the US. Mm -hmm. um, and this uh, started um, like, um, yeah, um, a week, a, a week, not not like a week ago. Anyway, uh, let me maybe go into into what happened. Um, her trial is being uh, uh, is is in in a in a court like a kangaroo court, where where the judge takes decisions even when there is no issue presented to to her. Um, so that's uh, what is uh, what is happening now. Her children, three, she has three children here in the US. As you can imagine, they have been uh, uh, traumatized uh, due to injustice committed uh, against their, their parents. Mm. Yeah. So um, recently, as, a, uh, as recent as last week on, uh, on, yeah, on Thursday, um, that something happened in the jail. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then my sister complained to her lawyers and I really applaud her, her lawyers. They, they have been uh, doing a good job. Um, she has two lawyers, um, attorney Bruce Bikotwa and attorney Felicia um, Gashema. Mm -hmm. So she complained to them that um, on, um, on Thursday, last Thursday was, uh, uh, January 5th, yeah, January 5th, that the police, the police, I can imagine the police outside coming together with uh, the, the, the prison guards, mm -hmm. came into the prison and made a kind of like a raid, um, uh, a search, and they took her documents and the pictures of her, her, uh, her children. Which kind? Which kind of documents they they took of? They, they took the documents that uh, the lawyers had given her in the preparation of the or, or, um, of the trial. Mm -hmm. So usually, such documents are um, are considered privileged with the the attorney uh, the, yeah attorney client relationship. Mm -hmm. So those who uh, in the country where the law is uh, uh, is honored, usually the police, the the the, the, the guards, uh, they have no right of taking such documents. Mm -hmm. By they that by they took they they took them. Um, so the it, those documents were given to her by the lawyers, and mm -hmm. everything that goes into into prison, it's I mean it's inspected. Even those, I mean, those pictures before they uh, they got to uh, to her, they were inspected by the prison guards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, excuse me. Um, what is then um, uh, alarming is that those pictures of um, of uh, of my sister, uh, my sister's children, that were confiscated by the police on uh, this. Yeah, last on Monday when the I mean the lawyers went to check I mean to check on on the situation, mm -hmm. uh, they, they were not given any answer why those pictures were taken and they were and they had not been returned. Mm -hmm. And how yeah. how how old are the kids? Um, the kids are in their twenties. Um, yeah, uh, middle or late twenties. Um, yeah, so I mean, the the older one was uh, was born in 1993 in September 1993, mm -hmm. and then the twins uh, were born um, in 1994. So just a, a few months, uh, and 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 that that that, that that's what that, that's what shows how the this current regime has been really fabric uh, uh, has fabricated the stories against her. Accusing mm -hmm. her to go into into uh, checking IDs, to see IDs on uh, on the roadblocks, call, giving commands to uh, to militias while on the roadblocks. While at that time, 
1994, in April, May, uh, she was pregnant with those twins. Mm -hmm. And excuse me. Yeah, and she had uh, a seven months old. So a woman who is pregnant with twins, not only she was sick with uh, those, I mean, the sicknesses that uh, pregnant uh, women uh, do, I mean, do go through, uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, and she was not eating, but she was not even in politics. But here in Rwanda, they're coming with those fabrica uh, fabricated stories um, that uh, uh, that she was uh, she was in the politics. That she she did uh, she did participate in that in that kind of uh, act of genocide. Madam President, let's take a time to to think about the the, the charges fabricated charges. She's accused of um mr M mrs munyanyezi was very young at that time he yes. was young he was she didn't even finish her secondary school at that time mm -hmm. how do you explain that kind of um struggle against her why the government is so interested in arresting her and uh, having her in Rwanda, in the jail now. How do you explain that? Uh, thank you very much, Mr. President, for the, the great question. One of the things that uh, the, the current regime has been uh, um, doing is to oppress the opposition or to intimidate someone who would dare to, to speak up. Mm -hmm. And uh, not only that, um, uh, she, I mean, because she was connected to, or she's a relative of the people who were um, in the government of Habjarimana, President mm -hmm. Habjarimana, um, that is also part of the charges. Actually, the prosecutor, uh, I think it was in 2021 or 2022, when he said that one of the charges in front of the, um, the, the judge, Mm -hmm. all the judges, uh, everybody, he said that uh, one of the charges, it was because my sister, Beatrice Muyanyezi, was a daughter-in-law of <laughs> Porine Nyiramasuku. <laughs> so how can that be a charge? <laughs> so anyway, yeah, Mr. President, mm -hmm. that is, yeah, please go ahead. In our RPF regime, that is a, a, a great charge, of course. <laughs> relationship, relationship with someone who was in the politics, it is a, a, a huge, a very huge, a, a very dangerous, dangerous charge. Yes, of course, we, we can understand now. So you, you are saying that um, Munyanyezi was the sister, no, not the sister, the, the daughter-in-law of, of Nyiramasu. I, I think that is enough to be yeah, to have a to, to, to be in a such situation. And where is his husband? Her husband, please. Sorry. Her husband is uh, also uh, incarcerated in um, uh, in West African countries. Uh, I mean, it is, he's actually in Senegal. Mm -hmm. um, they accused him uh, also of uh, uh, having participated in the genocide. And him, he was also a student at the time. It. Um, yeah, uh, well, I'm, I'm talking yes about my sister's case, but the, her husband Shalom Arsen in uh, mm -hmm. was actually the one uh, taking care of the all the people who had sought refuge in the um, in the hotel called Ihuriro. Ihuriro Hotel was being built by uh, Sh uh, Shalom's uh, parents. Nahobari mm -hmm. Morris mm -hmm. and uh, Porin Nyiramasuhuko. Porin mm -hmm. was a minister in um, President Abdarimana's government. Mm -hmm. And um, um, her husband, Maurice Nahobari, used to be a, 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 a speaker mm -hmm. uh, of the, yeah, the parliamentary speaker. And mm -hmm. then, but in 1994, he was the, uh, the president of the university. Mm. Uh, in Butare. Mm. Yeah. So, one of, uh, so Sharon was uh, also a student there. Um, I can't, I, I mean, I can't testify for them because I was with them when um, 
uh, uh, when the, uh, I would say the killing started in Butare. Mm. Because at that, we had, I mean, we had fled into there, I mean, the, to Butare. When we reached Butare, we realized that Beatrice and her husband and their daughter had left their house and everyone together with um, the, the father in Ron Haubari Maurice and other relatives who had come from the village, they had um, two relatives who had fled the killings and they came also sought refuge in the, in the hotel. Mm. Uh, the hotel was still under construction. It was only uh, 12 rooms that uh, were finished. Mm -hmm. And in those 12 rooms, there were rooms that were occupied by uh, UN peacekeepers. Mm. Um, I think there were like, uh, they, they, they were six and the three, I think, uh, left. Then there were, uh, they remained three of them. Yeah. So by the time we came to join, we came actually with two vehicles we carried. Um, we're together with, I mean, as I mentioned the last time, with the Tutti family, um, and then uh, with uh, some of my uh, my relatives, and um, and another couple. So we we I mean, about eleven of us, and we joined them. I mean, when we came into the hotel, we we're about uh, forty people. We arrived on the twelfth of April. And then other people came, so we're about sixty people in. The, you can imagine the two, the twelve rooms. Mm -hmm. So we're packed. So anyway, so everyone could ask you a question about. Uh, you you told us you are telling us that uh, your sister was deported for from United States in in twenty twenty one. So everyone. Me too. I could ask the question: How the United States does do not understand that it is a case of injustice to deport that young young lady to Rwanda? When did they try to understand the case or not? Thank you very much, Mr. President. That's a great question. Uh, as as I um, and as I said uh, earlier, uh, you always had lobbies. I mean, uh, Rwanda had the, the people working as proxies, working on their behalf here in the U.S. And they had people in, um, uh, in the system, like in the immigration, um, in the State Department. Um, yeah, so they, they had placed people everywhere. Uh, they, there was also uh, another, actually, they were paying a monthly an, an organization or a company here to do that work for them. So to portray Rwanda as a good leader, uh, leadership, portraying Kagame as a good uh, visionary person, leader. I mean, uh, uh, at that time, yeah, at that time, they, I mean, they were, um, they were, it is now that it's changing, but before that, there was a good image that being portrayed about Kagame, how he's um, uh, he's the one who saved Rwanda, who um, actually stopped the genocide, uh, rescued the Tutsis uh, from being uh, killed, that things like that. So, do you, do you yes, know some, some names of organization who did that kind of job to help Rwanda to for the uh, a negative lobby? against some people, some people that the uh, current regime in Rwanda that do not, does not want to be, to, to be alive, if I can say. Do you know some organization in the United States? I, I don't remember them, I, uh, but I, if, I, I mean, if I had remembered, I would have uh, uh, researched. I know there are some, uh, some of the organizations, but I don't remember, uh, don't remember them. Uh, to record here now, but uh, but they are. Do you know some names of people, for example, who tried to be to instigate, for example, the case of Beatrice Munyenyezi in inside United States or any? There is actually, um, yeah, there is Ibuka, there is a. Uh, 
yeah, there, there, there is a ebook. There is one lady who was used, and I have uh, have uh, have her name on the uh, in my emails. But I will look for. I, I don't know if uh, my brother is, uh, is is listening. Can write it down for us. Uh, in the, I, I know. I don't know. I don't know if he's connected to the internet. But yeah, there is a person who had who had uh, written an email to some uh, some of the uh, some of the organizers. Uh, uh, the organizations and some of the people, some of the Rwandans, mm -hmm. saying that they should look for anyone who may have been um, in the vicinity or where Beatrice Munyenyezi come uh, come from, uh, or people from Butare, so that they can come up with uh, what they know about her, so that they can help the um, the prosecution. So I have that actually that that email, but I didn't uh, yeah, print it out. Okay. Next. Yeah, task. but yeah, yeah. Next time I can bring those uh, those names and the organizations, and we yeah we expose them. But otherwise, yeah, otherwise there were so many many um uh, organizations. The case of my sister, um, uh, for instance, I mean, after they have lost, when the jury could not convict her because they saw that it was um. Uh, uh, fab, uh, pure fabrications. That uh, when they came up with uh, another strategies, they said that uh, the lies they said that she did was that when she was filling out the um, the forms to obtain um, citizenship, there was a question where they asked if any of your, uh, if you or any of your family members. Um, have committed a genocide. Mm -hmm. and so when she said no, she wrote no on the, on the form. So that is uh, what they came up later on saying that she lied, uh, that she got now the, the, uh, I mean, the, the citizenship uh, unlawfully. And at that time, and, and they said that uh, because she has participated in the, in the genocide, Mm -hmm. That the uh, and that that she should have said yes to those mm -hmm. forms, and of, and they say that also her her husband, but her husband at the time, even though he's innocent, he was not yet uh, oh. convicted. Yeah, which means that my sister writing no on the uh, on the documents uh, on those forms, it was not. I um, mean, she did not lie under oath the way they accused her. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so her, her, her lawyers, you said, now she has two lawyers, but in United States, she didn't have a, any lawyer? She had lawyers. Mm -hmm. She had lawyers, um, uh, she had lawyers in the criminal case. Uh, she had um, lawyers in the, in the immigration case. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, the lawyers in the, uh, in the criminal case, I would say that they did their best, but of course, and some of the um, the proof of evidence they were not provided by the prosecution. Usually, the, I mean, there is a law here that um, if there is any proof of evidence that would clear the uh, the accused, the prosecutor has the obligation to give them to present them. To the other uh, side, the opposing counsel. I mean, to yeah, to the defense. Mm -hmm. um, but they did not do that. For instance, because they accused my sister of um, uh, being on the on the roadblocks. They claimed that there was um, a roadblock in front of the hotel uh, where we stayed um, in the month uh, month of May, uh, April and May. Mm. But the truth is the, the that roadblock was not there during those months, the month of April uh, and May. The uh, the roadblock was put in the vicinity of that hotel, not in front of the hotel, but in the vicinity of that hotel in the month of um, of June. Mm -hmm. And that month of June, uh, where um, as I. Uh, don't know if I remember if I, if I said that, but uh, in end of May, Beatrice uh, and my and my family 
we left Butare and went to uh, to Changugo. And but uh, but and then uh, her husband Sharom came after uh, after her. Um, the, uh, they spent a week together with us in Changugu. Uh, that Changugu is um, the southern, the southern, uh, southern part uh, near the mm -hmm. the border of um, the DRC, uh, DRC. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, DRC uh, and Rwanda. So mm -hmm. then when they came back in in June, I mean in the yeah, in the first week of June is when they found a roadblock put near that vicinity. Um, of the hotel. Mm -hmm. So uh, I said that the, the prosecutors here in the US, they did not provide the evidence. The proof of evidence is that in um, the, the, the FBI and the CIA, they have taken satellite pictures, which they have um, for the, uh, the the region of I mean the, the yes the the area of Butare, the mm. actual Huye. Mm. So those um, those pictures were not provided by uh, by the prosecution. Mm. So when the, the guy who was uh, testifying about those pictures, his name is called uh, Eric Ben. Eric Ben, when the uh, Beatrice's lawyers um, asked, he, uh, asked him, are there any other picture? Because he presented some pictures uh, that showed in um, uh, showed people walk, uh, moving uh, in in July. I think it was uh, it was in I mean uh, in the in June and July when the people were fleeing Butare. Mm -hmm. So those pictures were provided. Uh, but they did not cover the period of time um, of uh, April and May, where they accused not only Beatrice Mnyenyezi, but also her husband, that they uh, amended the acts of genocide in those months. So mm -hmm. when then Eric Ben was asked, are there any other picture um, that were taken by FBI and CIA um, in the month of April and May? that you did not provide to us. Mm -hmm. So the, the guy said that, uh, uh, that yes, there are pictures that, uh, that were taken in the month of uh, April and May to uh, 1994, but I, I did not provide them because the prosecutors told me to only bring pictures that would show, would maybe show something that looks like a roadblock. And exactly that is what, I mean, that is, um, uh, I would say it is, a, it is an offense or it is a crime, or it is, I mean, it is a breach of law to not provide such document that they call expir expiratory uh, evidence. Exp is it exp yeah. Yeah, yeah. So. And can you understand why the American prosecution was on the side of Rwanda and didn't try to understand that the situation of Beatrice was not somehow, but really a kind of uh, injustice, only. not Do you understand why really the prosecution did nothing to, to save her and to help her? A great question. Uh, you know, even though we are in these uh, developed countries, mm -hmm. Um, there are also uh, some corruption uh, that uh, goes on in this country. Mm -hmm. So the prosecutors, I do not, um, I'm, I'm, I'm not here to judge them, but uh, looking at what they did, mm -hmm. how they handled Beatrice's case, it is not, it is more likely than you noted know, that they, they had a personal gain in even a lying, I mean, lying and covering up uh, the, uh, the fabricated stories. They knew that Beatrice uh, was innocent. They knew that, um, um, that the, the so-called witnesses were lying, but they went ahead anyway and uh, tried to portray uh, 
uh, Beatrice as uh, if she was uh, uh, really uh, a criminal. Are you sure that the, on the side of Beatrice um, lawyers, are you sure that they did everything they had to do in order to show the truth about that case? Uh, I'm not sure about that because I would think that they they should have asked for those uh, uh, subpoenaed for those uh, uh, those documents, for instance, those uh, pictures, especially that it was uh, mentioned um, in the court instead of uh, just um, uh, relying on the witness uh, of the uh, of Eric Ben who said that yes, there are pictures there, um, but. Um, uh, but I did not bring them and they did not uh, at, at least ask for the, for the court to just stop the case and look for those pictures because those pictures would have <clears throat> destroyed that, um, that testimony uh, or the testimonies of those who were brought uh, in to testify against uh, Beatrice. And the court relied on uh, also on the testimony that uh, uh, the the so called sorry that I say so called but anyway he's uh, he's a, uh, he was a, sen a, a senator Iyamwemyo uh, guess they had given a testimony saying that not in that case but has given a testimony saying that uh, that he in, in that he was in Butare. In June, um, yeah, in May, uh, in, in April and May, that he has he had passed through that roadblock, and 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 he, he called himself that he was um, he was a retired a retired senator, mm -hmm. and that when it, when he was asked if he was uh, he, he had any gainful uh, he was a, 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 he had any gainful employment, he said no. That he was a retired senator, and yet I have just—I mean—I I learned recently that uh, um, that he was. I think he he, uh, he was uh, he was the the uh, he was in charge of a thinking organization. I mean, a organization or a department that uh, gives, I think, a medal, uh, something like that, in in um, in twenty twenty twelve. Because he had said he said when giving the testimony that he he had retired from the Senate uh, in October 20, 2011. Mm -hmm. So and that and that uh, and that he did not uh, that that he was not working in twenty twelve. Um, so that was to portray himself as someone who is not uh, involved with the government of Kigali someone who is not uh, sent by Kigali to come and testify um, against, uh, against people here. And also, and that he contradicted himself also when he said that he passed through that roadblock in two, 2008, when a US investigator had gone to do the investigation in Rwanda, he said that, uh, that he was not in Butare. In in uh, in May, uh, he said that he had left Butare in about um, April 17, 17 or eighteen, because he was he was trying to to distance himself from his father, uh, father in law, Cindy Kubwabo, who had made um, a public speech on April eighteenth that uh, people in Butare think that that speech set Butare on fire and that's when people are started killing uh yeah killing innocent people in Butare. So anyway it's yeah I think lies from Kigali is a normal situation. You you should understand that of course they have to lie in order to to kill and destroy people that they do not love. Of course let's hear from Kizito and then I will have two more questions for you before we we finish this discussion okay well thank you mm -hmm. okay
Jésus Christ, l'amour de Dieu le Père Jésus Christ, la vérité de Dieu Jésus Christ, le chemin vers le Père Tu es la vie, tu es l'éternité Jésus Christ est le chemin vers le Père Où tu es la vie, tu es l'éternité Arc-en-ciel, signe de l'espérance Arc-en-ciel, appel à l'unité Arc-en-ciel Dear viewers of the highest media, we are now discussing the case of Beatrice Munyanyezi, who is in Nigeria, in Rwanda. We know now that the, all the charges are fabricated charges, um, but we would like to ask to Madame Prudence to summarize again the charges she is accused of, and then uh, at the end we will try to understand why why the government of Rwanda wants absolutely to destroy this family. Madam Pridan, the floor is yours. Could you please the, summarize the, uh, again the charges for us to make clear um, of that situation? And then we would think about the why, why, why the government of Rwanda wants absolutely to destroy your family. Yeah. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Um, the, the charges are, uh, uh, um, uh, as I said, they are fabricated stories. Mm -hmm. uh, she has been accused, uh, I mean, she's being accused of um, um, having been, uh, uh, having uh, uh, done the act of, uh, of genocide, mm -hmm. that uh, um, uh, some of the, not that some, excuse <laughs> me, almost all of the, uh, he, uh, her accusers, uh, the so-called witnesses, uh, said that they uh, that she was with them, with those uh, men that uh, um, that uh, uh, they, uh, that are in prison now in Butare in Huye. That uh, they are they are they have been accused of uh, killing people, organizing uh, 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 being in Terahamwe, the militias, and they claim that. Uh, Beatrice Munyanyezi was the one giving them orders that um, he told them to, uh, he would tell them to rape women, uh, mm -hmm. to, kill the, uh, to, to kill people, and uh, that, uh, that, sh that she had a, um, a weapon, a shotgun, uh, that which she used uh, to, to kill a nun. And uh, another of the uh, the prosecutor's witness said that uh, that she had a, a, a big a big a, a big gun. Mm -hmm. I, I think uh, they mentioned that is a Kalachnikov mm -hmm. that she used to kill uh, to kill the nun. Some uh, one said that uh, she killed the nun at an, um, uh, near that hotel. Another one says that she killed the nun in the um, in the basement uh, mm -hmm. of the of the hotel. So just fabricated the stories that she organized a meeting of uh, MRND, the, the ruling political party at the time in 1994. And uh, so you can imagine, uh, uh, so they, uh, they also said that uh, she had a nickname uh, called, uh, that they called her commando because she was commanding them. Mm -hmm. So you want uh, uh, someone, I um, mean, uh, Beatrice who had not finished school, Beatrice, who had a toddler, a, a seven months old, and pregnant with twins, uh, who has never been in politics apart uh, apart from getting married to a son of uh, a politician. Mm -hmm. So 
th those are the fabricated stories that are uh, uh, that they have uh, they, they, uh, they, they, uh, they, uh, they, they are saying uh, in Rwanda and and for uh, for the the current panel of the judges mm -hmm. the president of that panel her mm -hmm. name is Patricia Mukaiza. Um, it, I understand that she was, I mean, she's a victim of genocide. And, um, but as, as a, a victim of genocide, she's trying to be a judge, but also a party. Uh, she's bringing her, um, her feelings of having been, uh, where she lost people, we understand. And uh, that she she survived from I think from other people who were killed. I don't know if she was uh, she was uh, removed from the from bodies. And I could I mean I completely understand the uh, the trauma she might have gone through. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, she's trying to use my sister's case um, to uh, to revenge. Mm -hmm. So like. Um, yeah, uh, to revenge. And, and you asked about the, the, the reason why the, the RFPA for the current regime. The real, the, what, what is the real reason of that kind of harassment against your family? Um, I believe that the real reason, um, I, I, there shouldn't be really any reason because we are Rwandans. <laughs> we are Rwandans. I mean, if, um, I mean you talk about, uh, about the, uh, uh, the, being Tutsis or being Hutus because they, they are killing Tutsis, they are killing Hutus. So uh, I don't think that may be the, the reason why, because even, I mean, even the Tutsis are being killed. Uh, but maybe because we have, uh, uh, well, some of uh, we have people who have been in the leadership in Habdarimana's uh, government and uh, people who have been trying to, um, and people are, I have a brother who has been very vocal. Mm -hmm. uh, against the current regime in, in Rwanda. Actually, uh, my brother was uh, in, in, uh, in the position of members at the time of uh, Habjarimana's regime. So he was among the people to be killed. But thank God he was, re I mean, he was actually uh, brought out of Rwanda by Americans and brought here in the, in the US, Higiro uh, Jamarivyani. So, mm -hmm. and then he was called to go back to Rwanda. Um, uh, by the current regime, at that time, because he, he was in the political party with uh, Fosten Tuajira Mungu. So Fosten Tuajira Mungu um, asked him to come and be, uh, to continue the politics in Rwanda. So my brother said, okay, I'm coming, but let me first of all settle my, uh, my family. So when, uh, after a few months, um, my brother heard that the current regime was killing people, innocent civilians in the churches. At that time in 1994, um, there were some organizations that reported how RPF killed uh, people, uh, Hutus who, have, who had uh, sought refuge uh, in the churches. And because of that, my brother who was already here in the US said that, okay, I, um, I opposed the, the Habjarimana's regime because of the, um, the way they were not, uh, the, the bad governance at the time, but you are killing innocent civilians. So I cannot join you. So from that time, he also became um, uh, one of the enemies of the, the, the RRP of the current regime. Yeah. 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 I think, I think you are true, Madam Prudence, you are true because you know, everything can be read clearly in the Gachacha law and the Gachacha tribunals, having been in the leadership under Habjarimana time, it is a crime. Just to, they do not ask you if you, you, you did something wrong, but to be in that leadership, your family have to be, has to be destroyed. We know that. But now, how do you plan to save Beatrice Munyenyezi? What are you doing? How are you organized to help her? What do you ask to the society, to, to the Rwandan, the other Rwandans, to the government of, of Rwanda in exile? How, what are you 
asking for to help her now? A great question, Mr. President. Um, what am I asking uh, for in I mean, for the one and community, not only the ones here, but even the ones uh, inside Rwanda. Mm -hmm. um, currently, like uh, my sister um, had her la last hearing um, on December 11th, uh, 2020, 2022, last year, last year. Mm -hmm. uh, on, during that, um, that hearing that the prosecutor out of the blue, out of nowhere, asked her uh, saying, oh, where is, uh, um, why are you are ch children? So she said, um, my children are in the US. So then he asked, um, what are the, uh, their status, their citizenship? So mm -hmm. she said, they are Americans. Mm -hmm. And then she said, well, I mean, the, the, <laughs> the prosecutor said, that um, well, since you uh, the pa bo bo both parents are Rwandans, mm. uh, your children should go to U.S. Embassy and um, uh, ask for uh, for passports. Uh, then my sister said that uh, why would they ask for passport? That uh, she said that uh, my that high um, oldest passport, you mean Rwandan passport? Yeah, exactly, yeah, Rwandan passport, yeah. So she said that why would they ask for one and passport uh, when the, 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 I mean, the, the oldest daughter left Rwanda when she, she was about uh, seven or eight months old. Mm. And um, the, the other two, uh, two children were, uh, were not born in, even in Rwanda and have never been in Rwanda. Mm. So now that they are Americans, why would they ask for Rwandan passports? So and she uh, that the, the story or the, or the conversation ended uh, ended up there, but so now the the I mean my sister is worried because they took on um, last uh, last Thursday they took the pictures of her her daughters her her, her children, mm. so um, now coming to to the fact that we know that people are being. Uh, uh, I mean, are disappearing. Mm. You wonder why those pictures were taken by the police together with uh, the police from outside the jail, although they were together. I understand that the, that raid that was done was done uh, with, uh, by the police and the prison guards. And interestingly enough, and I don't know if that will be just a, a pure coincidence. On that Thursday, uh, my uh, Beatrice's daughter, who is here in the US, mm -hmm. ordered food. Um, at the, what, I, I don't know how you call it. It's not takeaway. She ordered food while she was in, her, uh, in the apartment or mm -hmm. in the building. And a Uber person was to deliver the food. Mm -hmm. So the Uber person who delivered the food. Don't tell me she, he was in Rwanda. He was in Rwanda. Imagine. He was. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he was, he was in Rwanda. And um, he was in Rwanda and, and uh, by the name Jean Paul. Mm -hmm. And he asked, he sent a, he sent a text uh, saying, can I greet you? And the text was in Kenya Rwanda. Um, but uh, my, uh, my niece, my Beatrice's daughter did not, uh, did not reply because mm. uh, she, no, she, does not, uh, she does not understand the, uh, the Kenya Rwanda. Mm. But I mean, she, she didn't understand that word. And then, um, so that guy, the usual, I mean, the, uh, the way that food was to be delivered was to, de to be delivered uh, on, uh, at the door. Mm. So the, that, she, uh, the, that, that Uber driver was to leave the, the food at the door. But you see, he wanted to, to see, I mean, to take that opportunity to have her come, um, yeah, mm. ca 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 yeah, come and meet him. Mm -hmm. So, um, that is that is really a concern. I don't know if that food was uh, was poisoned, 
And uh, as a child of God, I am a Christ ambassador. So I take this opportunity actually to cancel every effect of any poison that might have been put in that food. And I cancel the effect of it uh, in the body of my niece in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And it is done. We have the power to destroy the, the effects of the, um, the acts of the enemy in the name of Jesus. Anyway, the, but the, the good is, <laughs> is Beatrice still uh, have American citizenship or it ended up with um, considering that citizenship? Um, uh, great question. Beatrice's uh, citizenship was canceled uh, because of that case. Um, and because um, it affected the, the, the children's citizenship, but the case is in court for my sister's, uh, my sister's children. Uh, and also uh, even Beatrice is a case for, uh, to challenge that decision that revoked her citizenship is still also uh, in the court. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the children are still, uh, are still Americans. Mm -hmm. uh, that they, I mean, with that challenge that uh, the lawyers are, uh, um, have put, I mean, ha have addressed, but the judge has not yet decided upon, upon it. Madam Dons, I would like to thank you for sharing this difficult situation for your family. And um, I would like maybe to ask you a last question because last time as the Minister of Foreign Affairs, you have written a, a letter uh, to about, about our minister, Fidel Gakire's situation. Did you have some answer or do you have a word to say about that case? Uh, thank you very much, Mr. President. Yes, that case, um, again, it, it, this, um, uh, when, uh, when my sister uh, mentioned about, when I heard about my sister's uh, situation with those pictures being taken, <clears throat> me, being taken and uh, then the, the incident of uh, my niece uh, getting food from, uh, from Rwanda, that reminded me about uh, um, the situation with uh, Minister Gakiri. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, we wrote the letter um, to uh, uh, to the U.S. Uh, uh, to, to, to the Rwanda, and the, the U.S. Embassy, the ambassador of Rwanda in the U.S., mm -hmm. um, addressing the uh, that disappearance, asking her to explain um, the the whereabout of Minister Gachiri, mm -hmm. uh, because later on we learned that. Um, the, from the uh, senior superintendent of prison, Ms. Peli Uwera uh, Gakwaya, uh, she alleged that uh, uh, Minister Gachire was uh, in the Majerajiri prison uh, serving um, a 30 day sentence. And that was, I think she, if I, I recall correctly, Miss um, Miss um, uh, Gakwaya had said that the uh, uh, Minister Gakire was uh, taken in uh, in October, either 23rd or 24th. Mm. So at this time, the 30 days um, have, I mean, uh, have expired. So Minister G uh, Gachire uh, should be uh, out by now and be seen. So we, we uh, in that, that letter, we copied many, um, many different personalities, including um, um, the Secretary of State, um, Anthony Blinken, and um, also we copied uh, Robert, um, the Honorable Robert um, Hernandez and, uh, and, and the different ambassadors. Mm -hmm. So we are hoping that, I mean, we are hoping and we hope that usually uh, United States uh, of, uh, in this country, they usually do the investigation. So we believe that, um, um, yeah, we, I mean, we are going to follow up, of course, but we believe that um, uh, something will come up. And I take this opportunity to really ask the, the Rwandan community, I think we should write um, 
a petition and ask that that ambassador, you uh, Rwandan ambassador, and the US should be uh, removed from uh, that position because uh, he, uh, he, I mean, her role is only her name is Matilda. Yeah, her name is only. Uh, uh, I mean, her role is only to I mean to to put into action the plans of the killing machine in in um. Uh, that, that killing machine in Rwanda is being uh, also used here in the US and that should not be allowed. So mm -hmm. I'm calling upon the Rwandan community to really st uh, stand up and uh, have this regime, um, uh, uh, we have to stop them from continuing to oppress um, innocent civilians. I don't know, um, yeah, what, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, what the Rwandan community will think, but it is really time to join the Greeks mm -hmm. and uh, I mean, fight this uh, fight. We know that God is on our side and he's helping us really uh, using um, many countries now that condemn the current regime in Rwanda. So, um, I mean, uh, I hope I have confidence that um, very soon the leadership uh, will change. Let's keep hoping that the United States of America um, law enforcement are following up uh, investigation to find out what happened to Mr. Gakide, because I still think that he's in the United States, in the embassy, in the Rwanda embassy, not in Rwanda, not in Magiragere. Because if, if he was there, why they do not show him to the, to, to, to the media? So continue struggling, continue to, to fight for her, to free him. I think we will overcome that situation and we will have him free um, as well as your sister, Beatrice. Um, we will pray for her and we will continue to talk about her and to try to to use media and talking about her case in the United States and other countries. Let's keep hoping she will be one day uh, free and be able to, 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 to meet again with her, her children who are in, I, I, I could think in a very bad situation. The lack of their mom now, it is not, uh, an easy, an, easy, an easy situation for them. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Madame Prudence, for this discussion. Uh, next time, maybe next Friday, if you want, we can organize something else. There are some ministers who want to participate in this discussion. We will have another, another um, subject maybe, but it could be also interesting to come back to your to your family situation, because I think your family had to be destroyed by RPF. RPF tried many ways and strategies to destroy everyone of, from your family. But as you pray every time and you believe in God, I think he will continue to protect you. If you have something to say, to say, tell, Bye bye to our viewers. It will. Be, it is time now to do so. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, my uh, my president. Um, I thank you again for uh, this time uh, together in this uh, broadcast and uh, the way uh, you help uh, you help all of us uh, putting uh, uh, into the open, uh, letting the public know um, how the current regime. Uh, uh, is I mean the the, the bad things uh, things that they have done. The, um, the oppression they have uh, brought into um, into Rwandans, so not only Rwandans, but uh, but also in the Great Lakes uh, region. Um, yeah, it is my pleasure to come back, uh, Mr. President, and um, I, again continue to um, to make um, uh, to to put in the open um, what is going on uh, with the current regime in Rwanda, but we. We, yes, it is my hope. And, uh, and as, I, as you said, I pray, I know that uh, God answers prayers and uh, he will soon put an end to, um, 
to the ordeal that uh, Rwandans have gone through and even uh, Congolese because of the, the bad uh, leadership in Rwanda. So thank you. Thank you, our viewers. Uh, we, we love you and uh, God bless you all. Thank you. Welcome, Madam Pridals. This is the highest media. If you have some story to let the public know, come here. You can have, you can speak here, not here in Rwanda, but French or English. You are all welcome here on the highest media. Let's finish this discussion by Kizito Mihigo, who is praying for the unity, for peace of all Rwandans. Mambo, the corner one or watch no corwanda, rofi to Hamina, Hamina, Boko, it is your say, Siyose Gwimenye ko Umumge usho Moka Arkansi Yeah.